All right, ready to see a magic trick? You see this image right here? No cuts here in the video. I'm not gonna trick you, I'm not fooling you. And here's a different device. This is my iPad mini. Magic. Okay, really it's just universal clipboard, but I'm gonna give you 15 tips for working with text on your iPhone, your iPad, across your Apple devices. Things like three finger gestures to undo, how to have your device speak text to you, even an entire article, get a word count for selected text, and how to run some useful shortcuts right when you select text, either in the notes or anywhere on your device. All right, let's start off easy. Wherever we're writing, whatever text we have on our device, once the keyboard is up, you can move the cursor around by tapping and holding on the space bar and move it around precisely where you would like it. Now, I know you probably already knew that one, just wanted to get out of the way. Now, tip number two is the universal copy and paste. This is the universal clipboard that's across your Apple devices. That means all your Apple devices that are logged into the same Apple ID, whenever you select text and hit copy, you can then go to paste on your other Apple devices. And what you copied over here is going to paste on your other Apple device over the cloud. I'll show you even with a larger piece of text, I can hit copy here on my iPhone and then paste here on my iPad. And all of that text goes automatically. This also works across your iPhone, iPad, and Mac. So Universal Clipboard is across all those devices. You actually see that little symbol when it's copying from Universal Clipboard telling you what device it's coming from. All right, tip number three is you can actually copy and paste images as well as text. So if I tap and hold on this image, you'll see copy is an option. I can hit copy and then paste in another app or Universal Clipboard paste on one of my other devices and I can copy and paste that image. This also works in the Photos app. So if I wanted to tap and hold on a photo here, you'll see copy is an option. And then I can hit paste wherever I'd like and that image copies and pastes. Now tip number four is that magic trick that I showed you earlier. You can actually copy, cut and paste using a three finger gesture. So if I select this photo here, obviously you see the cut, copy, paste menu there. But if I just take three fingers and pinch in, that actually copies it to my clipboard. You actually see the copy mark right up there. And then if I wanted to paste this somewhere, I can actually pinch out with my three fingers and it will paste wherever that cursor is. And you can even cut using a double pinch in. So three fingers, it's a little hard to do on the iPhone, a little easier on the iPad, but twice that will actually cut instead of copy. So you see now that image is gone, three finger pinch out, and now I've pasted that image back. And speaking of a three finger gesture, tip number five is you can undo just by swiping three fingers from right to left on your screen. So if I swipe with three fingers right to left, it actually undoes that paste I just did. Or let's say I accidentally delete a bunch of text here in my note. If I wanna undo that, I can take three fingers, swipe right to left, and it undoes that last action. Now you can also access that undo menu just by tapping with three fingers wherever there's text. Now you'll see the undo menu up there plus paste and a redo option. So if I wanna redo that cut, I can do that, or I can tap undo up here. And all that is is a three finger tap on the screen. All right, tip number seven, if you see a word underlined in red, obviously your iPhone thinks that's misspelled. So if you wanna correct it, just tap on the word and you'll see what your iPhone actually thinks it should be corrected to. You can also ignore that and just leave the spelling as is. But if you wanna tap and then correct, just tap the word that you actually intended. Speaking of tapping a word, if you ever wanted to look up the definition of a word, just select an individual word like that. And when this menu comes up that has the normal cut, copy, paste, and replace, hit the right arrow until you see look up. Then when you tap look up, it'll show this word in the dictionary. You can program what definitions you wanna see or what dictionaries you'd like to see in what order. To change some of those dictionaries, you can go to the settings app on your iPhone. And it might be easier just to swipe down and then search for dictionaries. Here you can choose dictionary and you'll see all the available dictionaries. You can uncheck or check whichever ones you'd like. Tip number nine, you can also translate a word right wherever you select it. So I might select lovely here. And if I go right in this contextual menu again, I can get to translate. Then translate will ask me what language I wanna to translate to. That did Spanish, but I can also tap here and choose a different language like French and actually play what it sounds like in the other language. Charmant. And then I even have more actions here like copy translation, add to favorites, or open in the translate app. This also works if you copy entire paragraphs of text. If I select all of that and then go over to translate, I actually have that entire paragraph now translated into French. And just a bonus tip, if you need to use accents or things like an umlaut from other languages, tap and hold on that letter on your keyboard and then you'll see all the different options for accents or umlauts and that works for any letter that you might have to add an accent or tilde. 
Number 10, you can actually search the web with selected text right here. Maybe I want to search to find out what is this from? I select the text, hit that right arrow, and then I can actually hit the share button in this contextual menu. Sometimes this option disappears if you have too much text selected, but I can tap search web and it will open Safari with that selected text as a search term. This line is actually from a Shakespeare sonnet, but apparently this is also a movie. Anyway, number 11, you can actually enable this feature in accessibility, but when you select text, you can choose to have your voice assistant speak it to you. If I tap right in this menu again, I can go to speak. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Now, if you want to enable that, go to the settings on your iPhone. We'll scroll down to accessibility and then go to spoken content. You can toggle on the speak selection. This way it will have that option in the contextual menu to speak whatever text you have selected. And there's also an option to speak an entire screen. With this enabled, you can swipe with two fingers from the very top of the screen and it will speak the entire web page. Let's say you're looking at a Safari web page, but you're driving, but you really want to know what it says. Well, here I have the web page pulled up on my phone and I'm going to swipe down with two fingers from the very top and it will start speaking this entire page. Skip to content. Vision Pro next week. CAS and my new tech podcast, January 11th. Doesn't really pronounce my name right, but that's okay. I can pause and play and also change the playback speed. Now I listen to podcasts at 1x, but the voice assistant's a little slow in reading text like this. It has brought huge tech news across the entire industry, from AI gadgets to smart home innovations. And there you go, speak the entire screen just by swiping down with two fingers. All right, number 12. Once you select a certain amount of text or just a word, you can actually share that text from the share sheet. I'll hit the right arrow again, and there's the share option all the way at the end. When I tap share, I have lots of different options. I can send this in a text message to someone, airdrop it, create a new note, save it with something like Anybox, and you also have access to all of the shortcuts that you might have programmed that takes text as an input. Which brings us to tip number 13. One of the shortcuts I have here in my share sheet is word count. When I tap this shortcut, it will actually tell me how many words that selection was, which is 55. And this works anywhere I can select text. Just to give you an idea of what that looks like, this is the word count shortcut. I'll link this down in the video description but this can receive lots of different content. And if there's nothing in the share sheet, I can actually choose to get the clipboard when I run the shortcut. There's an action here in shortcuts that's just count words. You can also change this to count characters, sentences, or lines. And then I just choose to show that in the quick look. Then whenever I select text, it will show me the word count whenever I run the shortcut. Tip number 14 is another shortcut. And whenever I select text, I can go all the way over to the share button go down and I can actually change the format of this text. To build something like this, create a new shortcut, hit that I button at the bottom and toggle on the show in share sheet. Or if you tap the word any, you, and you can choose just to accept text. This will limit the places that'll muddy up your menus. Then when I add an action, I'm gonna search for something like HTML. And here you have all these different options. You can make rich text from HTML or make HTML from rich text. Let's choose that one. Choose to select the variable and we're gonna do shortcut input. You can also choose to get clipboard if there is no input. And then I'm gonna show a quick look. This way we can see the result right on screen. And with this text selected, I'll go over to the share button. I should see my rich text to HTML option. I'll tap that. And now you'll see it made HTML from that selected text. That also works with markdown. If I go back to my shortcut, I can search for markdown as an action. And because notes doesn't support markdown natively, this is a quick way to make markdown from the rich text and having multiple shortcuts like this, it's easy to have rich text to markdown, markdown to rich text, or HTML, all right there from the selection menu. All right, at number 15, I'm gonna show you one of my advanced shortcuts, and this is to get my podcast show notes ready for primary technology. This entire shortcut, there's a bunch of steps, but basically it will get my input from the share menu or the clipboard, and it's going to format all those links in HTML, plus add a bunch of things for the show notes, typically with things I include every time, and even sends it to ChatGPT to generate a title and description. So let me show you how that works. Let's say here are all the links that I had saved for that podcast. So I'm gonna select a few of those links. Usually I would do all of them. I'm gonna go over to the share button and I'm gonna run my primary technology show notes shortcut. As this is running, it's going to load each of those URLs, get the article title and also the description because it's gonna use that for ChatGPT. Hit always allow on all of these different pop-ups. Now this is showing me a few of the articles, whatever I wanna base the title and description on. Then I'll hit done. Again, always allow for all of these. This is sending it to ChatGPT using Federico Vitici's SGPT shortcut. 
and is going to come up with a description and title for this episode based on those article titles and description. There's my podcast description based on those articles. I'll export that and copy. Again, always allow for all of these. Now it's sending it to ChatGPT again for a title based on a certain length. That's part of the prompt I have. I'm going to hit done. And now it's copied all of that to my clipboard. It doesn't look like anything happened, but if I go down here to the bottom of my note and hit paste, you'll see on my clipboard was an HTML formatted show note links, which is right there. All the pre-populated text that I use with every podcast episode. And it even has the description and title of the show generated by ChatGPT. All of this was from running that one shortcut via the share menu, all right here in my note. If you want to learn more about that specific shortcut, maybe for your own podcast, I'll link a video right up here where I walk through it step by step. Hit that like button and subscribe before you go because I have lots of shortcut videos. I'll actually put a playlist right up here, starting with seven basic shortcuts that are easy to build. And I have lots of shortcut videos that gets even more advanced as you go. Plus, I have a video coming soon about Apple Watch action button shortcuts that work on the watch every time. I tested them out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below this video. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.